Michael Bay films always teach us important life lessons. This one? Be sure to wear proper footwear for the occasion. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2022 action thriller, Ambulance. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Ambulance stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, and Isaac Gonzalez, and was directed by Michael Bay. Based on the 2005 Danish film of the same name, it tells the story of two bank-robbing brothers who hijack an ambulance carrying a wounded police officer in order to escape. There are a lot of directors who can consistently surprise, whether it be tackling a lot of different genres or just approaching each project in a slightly different way, you never quite know what you're in for. There are a few directors, however, who are the exact opposite. No matter the project, no matter how many movies they've made, you know exactly what to expect when you see their name pop up in the opening credits. If you're watching a disaster movie, Roland Emmerich's your man. But if you're watching an action movie, Michael Bay is gonna deliver exactly what you expect him to. Bayhem. Explosions, car chases, shootouts, shaky cam and chaotic editing, some really clunky dialogue, and at least one shot of the camera spinning completely around the main characters. It probably won't be very good, it'll definitely be over the top, but because you know what to expect, you still go, ready to eat some popcorn and watch some explosions. Ambulance is undoubtedly a Michael Bay movie. He takes a low-budget and comparatively subdued Danish thriller, throws $40 million at it, and makes it into a bombastic, chaotically insane action blockbuster. The premise here is actually pretty strong, tweaking a few things from the original movie to ratchet up the tension from the get-go. This is a heist movie on wheels. It takes the tension of a bank robbery hostage movie, but pulls it out of the bank and instead puts it in the back of an ambulance for a very extended action-packed police chase. With the film's huge budget, we spend a lot of time with characters outside of the ambulance, but make no mistake, our three main characters are the ones speeding through the streets of Los Angeles. We aren't given much beyond some superficial characteristics, but it's enough to sort of make you care, which introduces an interesting conundrum as to who you should be rooting for. This film might not have all that much in terms of character development, but it's definitely got plenty of action. There's some setup at the very beginning, and then the bank robbery that instigates everything, but this movie is probably about 75% car chase. Explosions, helicopters, shootouts, you name it. This has clearly got Michael Bay's fingerprints all over it. Much of the action feels standard for this type of movie, but there were a handful of very bloody and kind of cringe-inducing moments. But the physically painful scenes aren't going to be the only things you'll cringe at here. In classic Bay fashion, the editing is irritatingly chaotic. In fact, the Bayisms border on parody at times. An absurd number of lens flares, shaky close-ups of people's mouths during emotionally fraught scenes, these random high-angle camera sweeps that go down the sides of buildings, and whew, is that script rough. Nonsensical, bloated, full of clunky dialogue, and brutally unfunny attempts at humor. Yeah. Definitely a few things beyond the blood and gore to make you cringe. Ambulance is an exciting, moderately entertaining ride, but it's definitely a bit too much. This is the kind of story that would make a killer 90-minute action thriller. I mean, the original movie was only 86 minutes long. Even with this version's iffy script and ultra-shallow characters, 90 minutes would have been the perfect amount of time to deliver a tense, action-packed movie. But instead, this movie is an absurd 136 minutes long. It adds eye-rolling emotional moments, completely unnecessary side characters, each with their own subplot, and a series of increasingly more ridiculous situations just to keep extending the film. So unlike the ambulance, inexplicably, this story starts to run out of gas headed into the third act. It definitely has its moments, but it's just unnecessarily dragged out, turning a tense film into a slightly tedious one. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. The biggest pro is the premise. 
Obviously, the credit here largely goes to the original 2005 film, but I do think it's a solid concept. It blends two action thriller plot staples into a single action-packed ride. I always enjoy the tension of heist movies or bank robbery movies. We usually get to see both the police and robbers trying to work out plans, plus some tense moments with the hostages. These stories are good, but are typically slower paced with a lot of downtime when the robbers are holed up in the bank. By putting the hostage situation on wheels, this movie suddenly gains a lot of freedom and can do some of the more action-intensive things that other crime thrillers are able to do. On the con side, the biggest issue is the script. I'm sure this doesn't really come as a surprise for a Michael Bay movie, but this script is a bloated mess. It has the makings of a really good movie buried in it, but it takes too bombastic of an approach. The main characters are underdeveloped, it's jam-packed with fairly inconsequential side characters that take up a lot of time, characters do things that make no sense in the context of the movie, the dialogue's super clunky, and there are a number of randomly inserted jokes that not only don't fit the tone of the film, but are also horribly unfunny. Con number two is a bit of an offshoot of the first, but this movie is just too long. Now, I have nothing against long movies. If a story requires it, Great, take all the time you need to expand on the characters and craft a well-conceived plot. But this is not one of those stories. This is a car chase movie. Its characters are underdeveloped, its plot is simple, so it's exactly the type of movie that could and should clock in at 90 minutes. Instead, what could have been a tense action-packed thriller is dragged out for an unnecessarily long 136 minutes. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Ambulance or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Ambulance 3 out of 5 paws. I went back and forth between two and a half and three, but finally settled on three, because in spite of its excessive length and rough script, it still delivers an action-packed thrill ride in classic entertaining Bay fashion. I would recommend Ambulance to people looking for an action-packed, explosion-filled action thriller. It's got a bit more tension than your typical big dumb popcorn movie, but it still fills that niche very nicely. Fans of Michael Bay will get exactly what they want, and anybody who's previously seen any Michael Bay movies will get exactly what they expect, for better or for worse. If you liked Ambulance, I would recommend the original 2005 Danish Ambulance. It's pretty low budget, even when not compared to a Michael Bay action blockbuster, but it's a much tighter and more streamlined version of the same basic story. If you enjoy Jake Gyllenhaal's unhinged performance, you might want to watch Nightcrawler. It's a darker story, but focuses on another Gyllenhaal character who's willing to do whatever it takes to accomplish his goals. And if you're interested in another Gyllenhaal-led US remake of a Danish thriller, you should check out The Guilty. He plays a 911 operator, and this tense film plays out mostly as a single location thriller. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Ambulance? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite American remake of a foreign film? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe while you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.